wrestling fans. My name is Brian Crazy, JEC Styles, and we're the F and brand of wrestling and entertainment here on YouTube.com. Thanks for tuning in once again. We are back with our Monday Night Raw review for May 14th, 2012. It was a pretty big night on Raw. Several huge things happen tonight on Raw that will impact this Sunday's Over the Limit pay-per-view. Over the Limit is only six days away. Some major stipulations were added to the John Cena, John Laurinaitis match. A WWE superstar was released tonight on Raw, and we also saw the return of Paul Heyman for the second time in two weeks. So, J.C. Styles, would you like to start off the first segment of the night? Yes. We saw Triple H come walking out. He was supporting the brace for his injury that he sustained in the Kimura lock two weeks ago, which caused a breaking of his arm. He comes out, talks about how when Brock Lesnar came out in 2002 that Triple H pointed at him and said he was going to be the next big thing. Brock Lesnar then skyrocketed into the WWE, but as easy as he was burning through the roster, when he met a challenge that he couldn't defeat, he took his tail, put it between his legs, grabbed his ball, and quit. And then went over to UFC, which was kind of funny that he didn't mention New Japan Pro Wrestling or just mention that he went over to Japan. But he did the I think in all the WWE promos, New Japan Pro Wrestling has been omitted. I think when Paul Heyman made his speech last week, that was omitted. I think uh, in several mentions, even when he came back, they were hyping him as the UFC champion, former WWE champion, this, that, and the other. But yeah. New Japan really hasn't been mentioned by the WWE. Exactly. So Triple H said that Brock Lesnar succeeded and elevated his game and reached the highest mountain in UFC, becoming the UFC champion. Got his butt kicked in his last fight. Uh, then picked up his ball and quit again and came back to the WWE, targeted John Cena thinking that he was going to have an easy, you know, target, then met a challenge again and quit after breaking Triple H's arm. Then Paul Heyman comes out with a lawyer in hand and a lawsuit serving it to Triple H, then basically just says, Brock Lesnar is going to be suing you to get his millions that he's owed. Triple H got set off went and put his hands on Paul Heyman, then basically, as Triple H left the ring to cool off, Lesnar, sorry, Paul Heyman, said that he is now, that WWE is going to have, now have two lawsuits for violating Paul Heyman and putting his hands for assault. Yeah, he said that he is going to launch an, uh, a secondary lawsuit for assault and battery due to that situation, but it's kind of funny. I mean, he really didn't suffer any sort of... Um, Harm. Yes. He didn't have him arrested. I mean, I guess the only thing you could sue him for is like defamation of character and insulting his image. Because yes. I guess that could hurt his image that, you know, the COO of the WWE put his hands on him at a live event. I guess that's the one thing that he could, uh, in the real sense of a lawsuit, go after him for. But basically, Paul Heyman just came and stirred the pot. Exactly what Paul Heyman is a master at doing furthering a storyline, being the maniacal master that he is, and in the future there will be a match, I guarantee it, between Triple H and Brock Lesnar. There's big talk that it'll be at the SummerSlam pay-per-view, but I've even seen some rumors floating around the internet the last few days. There's some talk of putting it at the No Way Out pay-per-view. I think it would probably help the WWE more to have it at SummerSlam, yes. but also to have it at No Way Out, SummerSlam's probably going to be an automatic draw if the card is stacked right. No Way Out may not be. So having such a huge match in No Way Out might be what pushes that over for my rates for the WWE. Exactly. But uh, basically nothing really to dwell on here. I think we, JC, said it exactly what happened. And uh, the pot was stirred. I mean, the pot was stirred. So we go into the next, well, the first match of the night, Punk and Santino versus Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes. This is a good match. A lot of back and forth action. And uh, Cody Rhodes actually announced that this match was going to be taking place on his Twitter earlier on in the day. And he kind of made a little bit of a joke. He said, eh, hey, we got uh, millions of dollars worth of superstars in Santino. Yeah. But don't take anything away from Santino. He's an incredible superstar. Yeah, put the gimmick aside. Put the humor aside, whatever have you. For a little while, they didn't really let him shine and show that wrestling ability. But in the last few months, he's really picking, uh, picked up the ball and ran with it. Yes, uh, not to dwell on this match too, too much. We see CM Punk and Santino pick up the win. It was a great tag team match to start off the show. Uh, you know, I could have saw maybe seeing this going on at 10 o'clock a little bit, just, you know, to put something in the middle. But to see CM Punk start up the show was definitely good. I've been watching a lot of his old ROH stuff. And in the ring, CM Punk has definitely evolved as a competitor. Uh, you know, match style, submission style, whatever you want to call it. It's just really, really good to see CM Punk in the ring. 
and it was a great match. Exactly. If you follow CM Punk for as long as me and JC Styles have, you watch the footage from back in ROH, you watch the footage from Full Impact Pro, you watch the footage from OVW, you watch the stuff that he did in TNA, now the stuff that he's doing in WWE, and the progression of CM Punk as a wrestler is just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he's always been very, very talented, don't get me wrong, but some of the early matches, you could see some breaks in there, you know, some, yeah. some pauses, some, you know, calculated timing, whatever have you, but now it's just constant, 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 very reminiscent of a, you know, a flare steamboat. Those guys never got lazy. They went for hour draws, and it was just incredible stuff. And uh, CM Punk is just a great talent. I think uh, the one plus about this match going on so early in the night is anybody that started off the show, saw that great promo, gets to see some good wrestling, they're going to stick around. Yeah. Plus, for another segment of viewers, the younger guys, they're about to go to bed. Maybe they get to see one great match before they go yeah. to bed. Another plus, the guys that got to wake up 5 o'clock in the morning, they get to see a good wrestling match before they have to crash out for the night. So there's a lot of pluses on having such a high caliber match start off Monday Night Raw, keeping viewership and appeasing certain uh, portions of the audience. But then we go into the next match. Yeah, we see Diva action. We see Alicia Fox take on Beth Phoenix. Beth Phoenix picking up the win. Uh, Layla was outside uh, on the stage basically scouting her opponent for this coming Sunday's match against Beth Phoenix. And it was, you know, I don't want to say it was bad compared to last night's knockouts match, but I would like to see the Divas go a little bit more on Monday Night Raw. We haven't really seen a really long, at least a good five-minute solid Diva match in a real long time, not to take anything away. Beth Phoenix, I know, definitely can go longer than five minutes, and she they need to start pushing some of the younger divas and lighting the fire under that and also book them better. Well, so I think it's more booking them better because every time that the divas have gone out there, they have impressed in the last few weeks. There has been a uh, couple chances that they have been given. We've seen them have more time on TV. We've seen them actually go two, three, four minutes, and there's actually been some really solid matches. A few on Monday Night Raw. I think there was one on SmackDown. It was uh, Layla and Natalia, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And then we saw uh, the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. That was a pretty decent yeah. match as well. Um, like JC said... But just the booking on Raw. Yeah, the booking on Raw. Just give these divas the time to shine. If they fall flat on their faces, that rests on the superstar. But if they're not even given that chance, if you cut out their legs before they're even given the chance to stand, what do you expect? I mean, honestly. Um, then we go into the big announcement, the pre-show for Over the Limit. We'll go on at 7.30 live on YouTube, and it will feature Kane versus Zack Ryder. The grudge match everybody's wanted to see for months now since, you know, Kane turned Zack Ryder and John Cena into his victims. We saw Zack Ryder thrown off the stage, and then he had that extremely elaborate... But more, on, but more on Zack Ryder and Kane during our Over the Limit predictions, which should be up either tomorrow or Wednesday. Exactly. Please look forward to checking out that video. And don't worry, guys. Q&A is coming. I apologize that it has not been posted yet. But me and JC Styles want to sit down. We want to produce the best possible Q&A for you guys. And rushing is not the way to get that done. We want to break out a decent amount of time where we can produce a really good video that you guys are going to enjoy and even want to come back and see again. Uh, then we go into the next match. We see Kane versus The Big Show. Johnny East comes out, distracts The Big Show. Kane capitalizes, hits the choke slam, picks up the win. Post match, this is what JC mentioned on earlier in um, earlier in this video. Excuse me, that John Laurinaitis came out. He expected an apology from The Big Show and basically just humiliated The Big Show to the point where he had to get down on a knee and basically grovel and beg for his uh, job. And there was a lot of rumors floating around around WrestleMania that a big WWE superstar would be making his last WrestleMania appearance, but not his last pay-per-view appearance. Now, Big Show had his WrestleMania moment. He got to compete at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. In the storyline now, he's fired by John Laurinaitis. Is this going to be Big Show swan song? Is he done? I mean, is this is this the end for the Big Show? And I really would have liked to see the Big Show go out in a little bit more high-caliber feud than with Cody Rhodes. Not that the, he didn't help put Cody's, uh, Cody Rhodes over, excuse me, but, you know, the table match and just every, the yeah. way the whole thing progressed, it could have could have been a lot different. And I, you know, for someone like Big Show, it would have been great when I saw them uh, pair him with Kane tonight. I was really thinking, <coughs> oh, great, we got a new program. We got Kane versus Big Show for a couple weeks. This yeah. is going to be pretty interesting. What are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are this. Maybe uh, Big Show being gone is maybe just a way of uh, being fired as a way to give Big Show some time off. Or, and maybe we'll see this situation reversed after this coming Sunday's Over the Limit pay-per-view when we find out one of the stipulations in the John versus John match Quite at possible. Over the Limit. But a uh, couple of quick moments in the Big Show-Kane match. I think right around the end, the match was solid. 
uh, right around the end, you kind of saw it really didn't look like a choke slam. It was like more of like a choke push. I know Kane could pick up the Big Show, and I know Big Show could pick up Kane. But at that, where Big Show basically turned around and walked right into a choke slam, it was a little sloppy, but I'm not going to take away from the match. It was definitely good. That's my only little niche at the paper at this match. That that's Exactly. I mean, as wrestling fans, we're going to notice things that don't come off exactly <coughs> the way we want to see them. I and that's a point that me and JC Styles have always tried to make. But at the end of the day, like JC will agree with me, that we respect these athletes. These are human bodies. There's physics at play. Sometimes things just don't work out the way that they you would like them to work out. But at the end of the day, as long as we respect these athletes, the athletes that go out there and work hard, the guys that go out there and they're just there for the paycheck, screw them. I mean, I'm not gonna oh, stand. Yeah. I'm not gonna stand up for a guy that's trying to milk the business for everything that it has. But the guys that really care about the business go out there to entertain the fans, put their necks on the line. At the end of the day, they could legitimately end up paralyzed, broken arm, broken leg, whatever have you. Those are the guys that deserve yeah. our respect. And you fans, think about what I just said. I mean, honestly, they're just words, but I think they're pretty powerful word, words. Excuse me, in my opinion, and I'm sure JC agrees as well. Well, then we move into a six-man tag team match. We see The Miz teaming up with Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler to take on the team of somebody called your mama, Brodus Clay, the Funkettes, the fucking tea, the, <laughs> the Funketeers, excuse me, and uh, Blooper, Kofi Kingston, and our truth Now, this was okay, a Okay, 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 wait a minute. So we had, uh, we had Air Jimmy, and we had Zwaggler. Swiggler. Zwaggler. Swiggler. 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 Thumbs up or comment, Swiggler. Swaggler. Or Zwaggler. But we, uh, you know, great tag team match. Not going to say anything about it. It was definitely a unique pairing. I mean, we haven't seen The Miz, uh, Ziggler, and Swagger team up since WrestleMania. And we've kind of seen a little bit of a mixture of thrown in together with Air Jimmy, like you said, and Brodus Clay. But it was definitely a good match. Did I call Air Jimmy? Yeah, you did. I thought I called him later or something. <laughs> It was a great tag team match. Not going to take anything away. I'm glad to see that they're putting Brodus Clay in a little bit longer matches. So It was a great match, I do have to say. And it was nice to see Brodus Clay in a little bit different of a dynamic tonight. It was nice to see him paired with two other uh, high-flying superstars. So kind of, you know, it, it changed the match dynamic. We didn't have all high flyers. We didn't have all brutes. We didn't have a short squash match. We had some back-and-forth action. It was pretty interesting. It was great to see six superstars work this match. And I think that's the biggest thing, especially before pay-per-views, before... You know, before any show, any show, it doesn't even have to be before a pay-per-view. Let as many guys work as possible, long as the storyline permits. Yes. I mean, you don't want to throw eight guys into a match if it makes absolutely no sense. But if storyline permits, put as many guys on TV as possible. And the great thing about a show like tonight's Monday Night Raw is we weren't looking for, you know, concrete conclusions. We weren't looking for an end of exactly. anything. This was just furthering the bill towards Sunday. This was WWE's, one of WWE's last chances to sell us, the consumer at home, this pay-per-view. And, I don't know, the stipulations added to the main event have sure uh, upped the ante. And I think it's going to be must-see, at least that main event, yes. for a lot of the consumers at home and a lot of the fans and subscribers that watch us on this channel. And so uh, then we move, we come back from commercial and we see a backstage segment with AJ and CM Punk. We see uh, CM Punk, ba uh, AJ walk up to CM Punk, and they're basically exchanging words backstage. And CM Punk was playing it off as like, you know, look, I'm you know, fiddling with his drawstrings that are on his hoodie. He says, you know, I've known Daniel Bryan for quite some time, and I know he's not as bad as he seems. And then he turns around and like, but you, I've only known you as long as you and Daniel Bryan have been together, and you're a little unstable. And he walks away, and then we move into Sheamus walking out to the ring to sit down by comment at commentator to watch Orton and Jericho. Yeah, Sheamus is a special guest commentator during this match. We have Chris Jericho versus Randy Orton. Uh, Chris Jericho ends up winning by disqualification after Sheamus gets involved. I believe he hit Chris Jericho, thus causing the disqualification, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, which led to the disqualification. Uh, we saw Chris Jericho, when they were outside, throw Randy Orton into Sheamus intentionally. And then we saw Sheamus pull Jericho out and clothesline him on the outside. We see these two basically uh, stared out in the ring. You know, then basically they get right into the ring and says, come on, let's go. We hear numerous let them fight chants, referees, that whole big shebang, and we move into the... That whole big... Yes. <laughs> and then we move into the final segment of the night. Johnny Ace comes out, and then he is followed by John Cena. These two share words back and forth. And I have to say, John Cena was absolutely on fire tonight. He was 
freaking hilarious. I mean, he was just, I mean, Johnny East was trying to keep a straight face so bad, and I mean, he just kept cracking up. But I think the biggest thing to come out of this segment, not to dwell on it too much, is that Eve came down. Um, about three quarters of the way throughout the segment, she had a letter with her. She handed this letter over to Laura Knight. She ended up grabbing it, yes. opening it, basically yeah. saying Laura Knight has never learned to read. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that'd be pretty sad if the executive oh, yeah, yeah, tell her relations from Solidra. I mean, definitely, it would be funny. I mean, I mean stranger things have happened. Yeah, in this that, world, anything can happen in the WWE. Wow. Okay. And uh, so basically, John Cena reads this letter, and a bunch of stipulations have been added to this Sunday's Over the Limit pay per view match between John Cena and John Laurinaitis. They are as follows It will be a one on one match. There will be no outside interference. There will be no one at ringside. There will be no special guest referee. You can only win by pinfall or submission. Anyone who interferes will be terminated. And if Johnny Ace loses this match on Sunday, he will be fired as the permanent general manager of not only Raw, but also Friday Night Smash. Exactly. Out. Now, this is what I said at the, during the Big Show promo, uh, that maybe after, if Laurinaitis loses after Sunday, maybe the Big Show's release will be um, reversed later in, later on, you know, just to give him a little more time to just hang out, you know, catch, catch a breath. A catch a breather and rest up for a couple of weeks and then bring them back. And I think that's also important too. Sometimes to re not even reboot a character, but just to to change his story, to change the interest in him, to like you said, give him a couple weeks away can be good sometimes. Yes. Sometimes when you pull somebody away for a little while, especially when they're not doing the biggest of things, then they come back and you have them come back with a huge bang. Yeah. It could be great for I the big show. I think there was a interview a while back, not to dwell on the, issue, the situation at hand, um, a while back when there was all the breaking news on the Chris Benoit situation, um, that there was a lot of news, you know, a lot of valued points being thrown out that at, after WrestleMania, which is WWE's biggest show of the year, there's no rest period. Like in professional baseball or baseball, hockey, the football, basketball, soccer, you know, once you have win that get to that big show and you win or you lose, there's a couple of months gap. There's about a month gap before you have to get ready and prep yourself for spring training, or winter training, or fall training, or whatever sport that you I mean, whatever 20, have you. There's 24 hours from WrestleMania to Monday Night Raw. Exactly. And actually, depending on where you're scheduled on the card for WrestleMania and where you're scheduled on the card for Monday Night Raw, it can be less than 24 hours. Exactly. I think that's a really valid point. And I think another thing that a lot of people have been speaking about is the end the brand extension. And I don't want to dwell on this, but I think this is one of the reasons that the brand extension is so good. By having a separate Raw and SmackDown roster, you take a lot of pressure off these guys. You allow exactly. them to tour separately, and they get to work a little bit less dates, and they get to spend more time with their families. Because, guys, I'm sure when you go home, you get to like to see your wife, your kids if you have them, your girlfriend, your mother, your father, whoever is close and whoever you love, I'm sure you'd like to be able to get a chance to see them. And a lot of these guys get to spend, you know, maybe 10, a, maybe 10, 10, 20 days a year at home. And, and that's not all at one shot either. No, it's a that's day like, or two at a time. That's like working, that's like saying if, if it was to happen, Black Friday, for example, retail is hectic. I've worked in retail and I know what it's like and I know there's so many others out there that know what it's like. That's like working 23 hours straight on a Black Friday, coming home, only getting to see your family for an hour, and, going back and then going back to work. You know, that's exactly. what it's like for these hour, guys. You got an hour to rest, see your family, have a quick bite, get any of your business done. I mean, imagine the amount of business that just can't be exactly. taken care of. I mean, just little things. Just imagine all the things you take for granted that these guys aren't able to do. And that's the point that me and JC try to push here at the F and Brand is to respect these athletes because there's a lot of different reasons they deserve our respect. But like I said earlier in this video, there's a lot of athletes that are in it for themselves, that don't care about the business. And, you know, you have to judge that by a case-by-case case exactly. basis. But I think the biggest thing to come out of the night, right now, in the storyline, the big show is gone from the WWE. There's huge stipulations added to the match over the limit between John Cena and Johnny Ace. Paul Heyman, multiple lawsuits, future match. We'll see what happens. Exactly. Once we get a little bit more information, we'll bring it to you. But... I think it's time to wrap this up. You heard our thoughts. Now we want to hear yours. Please drop them below. Like this video. Favorite it. Whatever you guys want to also, do. Also, please check out all the channels that make up the Ephraim brand of wrestling and entertainment. Please check out the official website of the Ephraim brand at FightNationWrestling.com. It is late. Also, please check us out at Twitter at 
F and Shoe Wrestling, at Brian Crazy 2001, and at JCX Styles. Please feel free to touch bases with us in any way. Also, like us on Facebook. All the great links for those social medias will be down in the description box below. Have a great night. Safe early morning commute.